Mina, come down what? Jesus freaking gamer here. Coming at you with more Job. We got several more days of this. Are you ready? I'm ready and I am loving it. Job keeps it so, so real. Today we're, I'm going to start with verse 1 and I'm going to pick a few verses out of this chapter. By all means, read behind me. By all means, make sure that I'm quoting this stuff correctly and in context. Make sure that I am getting things right. Feel free to read this whole chapter. Feel free to read this whole book. It's good. It's solid. Job chapter 9 verse 1, then Job answered and said, truly I know it is so. In reference to chapter 8, Bildad speaking essentially that God upholds the righteous and puts down the wicked. Um, God is for the good, he's against the bad. And so that's what he's agreeing to. Truly I know it is so. But how can a man be righteous before God? If one wished to contend with him, he could not answer him one time out of a thousand. God is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who has hardened himself against him and prospered? Jump down to verse 14. How then can I answer him and choose my words to reason with him? For though I were righteous... I could not answer him. I would beg mercy of my judge. If I called and he answered me, I would not believe that he was listening to my voice. And then verse 20, Though I were righteous, my own mouth would condemn me. Though I were blameless, it would prove me perverse. And back up to verse 19, If it is a matter of strength, indeed he is strong. And if of justice, who will appoint my day in court? It all sounds kind of hopeless, and Job's situation was incredibly hopeless. That's one of the reasons the book is as raw and as real as it is. And I think everything that I chose from that, from that chapter there, not necessarily in order, I read verse 20 before verse 19, it was a matter of if you were to stand before God, if you were to actually be able to stand before him and talk to him, and I believe as a Christian that you can, I believe that's a doable thing. If you're allowed to do that, one, the first, the, one of the first things I would ask would be back to verse 16. If I called and he answered me, I would not believe that he was listening to my voice. If he talked to you, would you believe it? If, you, if, if I told you, you could, you could answer, you could not answer God, you could talk to God. Well, at, he, I, was, I was like, actually, you could answer him too. If he asked you a question, you could answer him honestly. Not that you would know the answer better than he would. Probably he'd have something to show you with any answer you gave him. But you can talk to him. You can ask him things. And you know what? You can answer his questions. It'll probably help teach you. How is anyone going to contend with God? That's a really good question. And a lot of people, non-believers, would say, well, one, God doesn't exist. And if he did, boy, would I show him something. Would you? Seriously, would you? If he created everything, you included, if he created this entire universe, as I've actually covered in the uh, omnipotent uh, message, it's a 30 minute message, it's a bit long, if you want to um, watch it, feel free to do so. I was like, link in the description down below, link in the description down below, as well as uh, yesterday's message. If you were to contend with God, if you were to uphold your righteousness and uphold your blamelessness, could you answer him one time in a thousand? Could you really defend your case before God? Do you really think that you would somehow outsmart him, outclass him, manage to get in something on him that he hadn't seen before? Yes, people can pray, and yes, can people can ask for things in this life. And as the New Testament goes on to explain a little bit more in detail than the Old Testament, it's according to God's will. You pray what's in your heart and God answers it. It's first and foremost because what you're praying is already in God's heart to do. He doesn't answer the prayers of the wicked. And we in our fleshly state are naturally wicked. And those of you who would say, well, that's what the Bible says. You know, I, I don't agree with the Bible. I think mankind is naturally good. If God is true, if God is real, if God's actually a thing, are you really going to argue with him and win? Really? You really think you could answer the Almighty with anything he doesn't already know? Do you really think you could one-up him in anything? And Job, who did believe in God, said, You know what? I don't know what's going on. I know to the best of my ability that I am blameless. 
Actually, in verse 21, talks about that. I am blameless. He's saying that of himself. I can't think of a single sin I've committed. And then he follows it up with, yet I do not know myself. I despise my life. It is all one thing. Therefore, I say he destroys the blameless and the wicked. The only conclusion he could come to is that apparently God destroys both. I can't answer him. I can't tell him he's wrong. And I can't find any wrongdoing in my own heart. So God must destroy the blameless and the wicked alike. That was the only conclusion he could come up with. There was nothing else he could figure out. Because how are we little humans going to answer to an almighty creator? There's a certain lack of reverence that the church does not have these days. And I'm certainly guilty of it myself. We're very familiar with God. We're very friendly with God. We see him as the loving father. We don't always remember him as the all-powerful judge. And it's high time that we started remembering that he's not only a loving father, he is also a wrathful judge. And he will see righteousness done in his creation. And if we think we're going to answer him with anything other than the answer he's already given, which is Jesus Christ, we need to re if we think we can, we need to rethink things. If we think we can give him an answer other than one he's already thought of, we need to rethink our positions. So, guys, that that's it for the message today. I love how Job is keeping it raw and keeping it real, and I love how I love how he's just honest about. It. You know what? Sometimes we we don't know all the answers, and if we go to God and say, God, something's wrong. Yes, yeah, something's wrong. That doesn't mean God's the one who's in the wrong. It's not like we can give some answer to an all-knowing, all-powerful creator. Guys, thank you very much for watching this message. Hopefully these things are ministering to you guys. The lack, the lack of sometimes definitiveness is ministering to me because it, the fact that we honestly as little human beings have more questions than answers, just the fact that knowing that someone as awesome as Job didn't have any more answers than me, that's, that's pretty awesome to me. So th once again, thank you for watching. I love you, and God bless.